In part one, we saw how Horst Schumann became involved in extreme right-wing politics at an early age. Whilst qualifying as a doctor around the time that the Nazi seized power, his early career included being head of the local National Socialist Doctors' Association and being involved with forced sterilizations for those people the Nazis felt should not have children. At the beginning of the T4 program, which aimed to murder what the Nazis termed life unworthy of life, he was appointed lead doctor at the Grafenet Killing Centre in southwest Germany. His role there was to decide if the people sent to be murdered were to be murdered and to turn on the taps to, to allow the gas into the gas chamber. From here, he was moved to Perna Sonnenstein, where he continued to be the person who turned on the gas taps in order to kill. He travelled around concentration camps where he selected weak and ill prisoners to be murdered. He went to Auschwitz where he performed sterilization experiments on Jewish prisoners before accepting that X-rays were not an efficient means of sterilization although he once more started performing such barbaric experiments on Sinti and Roma people at Ravensbrück. In this video, I shall tell you something about his post-war fate. In January 1945, Schumann was deployed to the Western Front as a unit doctor, where he was taken prisoner by the Americans. He was released in October 1945. He moved to Gladbeck in the northern Ruhr area. Here's a photograph taken shortly after liberation showing war damage. In Gladbeck, he duly registered his family residency there with the local registration office on the 15th of April 1946. He got employment as a sports doctor for the municipality. In 1949, he opened his own practice. This was possible with the help of a refugee loan, as his hometown of Halle was in now in the Soviet sector, soon to be become the German Democratic Republic, or as we always call it, East Germany. One of the very early works to be published on Nazi Germany and Nazi crimes was the SS State by Eugen Kogon, and Schumann was mentioned in it as an SS criminal. He may not have been aware of this when on the 29th of January 1951, Schumann applied for a hunting and fishing license from the town hall of Gladbeck. The police ran a background check which revealed Schumann's identity. However, given the huge amount of work with limited resources for the time, the police were not able to stop Schumann fleeing. On the 26th of February 1951, forewarned that he was under investigation, he fled. He got work as a ship's doctor and it was not until the 25th of February 1954 that the German Consulate General in Osaka, Kobe, Japan informed the police that he had applied for and had received a German passport there. In 1955, Schumann fled to Egypt and by the summer of that year was in Sudan where he was joined by his wife. Christ und Welt was an evangelical conservative weekly newspaper founded on the 6th of June 1948 in Stuttgart by Eugen Gerstenmeier, who had been a member of the Kreisau Circle and thus in the anti-Nazi resistance. In 1954, former SS Sturmbahnführer Gisela Wiersing became editor-in-chief of the newspaper. During World War II, he had been an advisor to Walter Schellenberg, who became head of Office 6, that is the SD abroad, of the Reich Security Main Office, RSHA. On the 16th of April 1959, Wiersing published an article about, and I quote, a second Albert Schweitzer who was living in a town in the border region of Sudan, Congo and the Central African Republic. Albert Schweitzer was noted for his humanitarian concerns and had worked as a medical missionary in Africa as his way of trying to offer some small compensation to the local inhabitants for the historic guilt of European colonizers. However, what Wiersing may not have understood is that the person who he was lauding for his humanitarian work was none other than a Nazi criminal responsible for the deaths of tens of thousands of people. 
Once more, however, Schumann was warned and thus able to evade arrest by fleeing first to Nigeria and then to Ghana. In Ghana, he set up a hospital in the remote location of Ketekrachi. Ketekrachi had belonged to the German colony of Togo until 1914, but was then occupied by the British during the First World War. The British administered it from 1919 as part of their League of Nations mandate of British Togoland. In 1958, this area decided in a referendum to join independent Ghana. As far as the authorities in Germany were concerned, the trail for Schumann had gone cold, but in 1961 he was stripped of his academic degree. In 1962, a report from the Daily Express discovered the Schumanns in Ghana. A German extradition request was ignored by Ghanaian President Kwane Nkrumah, who counted Schumann amongst his friends. Only after his fall in February 1966 was Schumann arrested by the new rulers and taken into extradition custody on the 7th of March 1966. Here we can see a copy of the Jewish Telegraph Agency's Daily Bulletin for Tuesday the 30th of August 1966. There are a number of stories in it related to the Holocaust. We can read that on the 29th of August 1966, Vasily Dolan was executed in Leningrad for participating in murdering Jews in Estonia and in the vicinity of Leningrad. This was one of a number of executions of Soviet citizens who had collaborated with the Nazi invaders. On that day too, a retrial date for Franz Novak, a former SS captain and Eichmann assistant, was announced in Vienna. Also on that day, a court in Accra, Ghana, ordered the extradition of the former Auschwitz doctor, Horst Schumann, accused of complicity in 30,000 deaths by West Germany. Here we have the Jewish Telegraph Agency's daily bulletin for Friday the 28th of October 1966. In it we can read that Martin Bormann is still alive, although we now know of course that he was killed in Berlin attempting to flee the stricken capital. We also read that Gerhard Borner, an accused Nazi mass murderer, will be extradited from Argentina to West Germany. We also read that Horst Schumann admitted in Accra that he had supervised the killing by gas of up to 80,000 people. He did not know ex exactly how many people he killed, as he was not counting. He also admitted that he killed 30,000 Jewish people by mass sterilizations, a crime he did because he claimed he feared that if he didn't do it, then he would get himself into trouble. By this time, it appears that he forgot that he was asked if he wanted to do the killing job and the person the job was originally offered to turned it down. In the case of his role at Auschwitz, there's no evidence that any Nazi official was ever punished for refusing to do a job of this nature. He could simply have refused at the time. What is ironic about this edition of the Jewish Telegraph Agency's Daily Bulletin is that Borner and Schumann must have known each other very well from their days at T4. They fled to different continents only to be extradited back to West Germany. Borner was a lawyer who had created the organisational framework for registering the victims, transporting them to the killing centre and notarising their deaths, including the administration of the estate and ensured former legal protection through an NS Special Registry Office in order to hide that night number of deaths from the municipal registrars. It was he who created a dummy company called the Gemeinwohliger Krankentransport GmbH, which carried the victims to their deaths. I did a video on this company a couple of years ago, and a link will be in the description. He was extradited back to Germany six days before Schumann. His appearance before the West German justice system followed a similar course of pretending to be ill so that the trial could not continue. On the 17th of November 1966, Schumann was extradited to Germany and taken into custody in the Butzbach Penitentiary in Hesse. In September 1969, Schumann divorced his second wife, 
who had returned to Germany with his family in 1965. The trial against Schumann began on the 23rd of September 1970 before the district court in Frankfurt am Main and became a legal scandal due to the numerous and sometimes highly dubious reports on his health and thus his ability to stand trial. In March 1971, the judges had to meet three times at Frankfurt's Hospital of the Holy Spirit, where Schumann had been transferred because of what was claimed to be severe circulatory disorders and stomach bleeding. Eventually, the proceedings were temporarily suspended on the 14th of April 1971 due to the defendant's high blood pressure. At the same time, the prosecution prepared additional charges against him relating to forced sterilizations. On the 7th of July 1971, the Frankfurt medical professor Hans Karl Breton certified that the prisoner Horst Schumann had constant high blood pressure with systolic pressure values of at least 190 and diastolic pressure values of around 130. Breton also diagnosed atherosclerosis and emphysema of old age after effects of gastric ulcer and arthrosis of the hip and knee joints. Although a doctor determined that Schumann was psychologically normal, he ruled out that Dr. Schumann could be restored for a lengthy trial. The two public prosecutors and the joint plaintiff lawyers, Henry Ormond from Frankfurt and Friedrich Karl Kaul from East Berlin, demanded a further report. In a report of the 6th of April 1972, the head of the local medical council, Dr. Heinz Degenhardt from Kassel's Central Prisoners Hospital, considered it to be quite improbable that Schumann would ever be able to follow a hearing twice a week. In the meantime, the public prosecutors, Johannes Warb and Siegfried Schmidt, based on internal information, had doubts as to whether Schumann's constant high blood pressure was actually objectively caused by organic factors. On the 14th of April 1972, they travelled unannounced to Castle and promptly encountered manipulations that contradicted the medical advice and treatment. I'm there quoting what was written on their report. In an urgent petition to the 3rd Criminal Division of the Frankfurt Higher Regional Court on the 17th of April 1972, they reported the considerable suspicion of targeted manipulation by Schumann. According to the testimonies of other prisoners, Schumann, as a doctor, knew what he was doing. He would, for example, regardless of his state of health, consume a considerable amount of coffee and tobacco, poured medication down the toilet instead of taking it, exercised before having his blood pressure measured, and used auto-hypnosis to raise his blood pressure. He would also eat a lot of liver sausage. I don't know how this would influence blood pressure, but maybe someone else is able to say how this would happen. The public prosecutors were somewhat surprised that nicotine and coffee had not yet been banned in Castle. Schumann was even in possession of large quantities of both coffee and tobacco during his alleged entreatment. He had repeatedly received groceries, including Hartwurst, coffee and cigarettes, from a certain Emmy Müller. This had been brought to him with the permission of the judge. Emmy Müller was a widow from Frankfurt who was a regular visitor to Schumann when he was in prison and during the trial. The Higher Regional Court followed the prosecutor's request to have Schumann's intake of medication monitored and the consumption of coffee and tobacco banned. After two months of observation of Schumann with too few and too irregular blood pressure measurements, according to Prosecutor Varb on the 26th of June 1972, Justice Hess issued a new report. It is true that Schumann in Kassel continued to be given antihypertensive and heart-strengthening drugs such as catapresin 300, presenol, intensin lanicol and nitrolingual. But the upper values remained above 200. The lower ones were no lower than 130. Hess again recognised malignant high blood pressure and the ability to defend himself was no longer to be expected. As a result, 
the third higher regional court Senate suspended the arrest warrant against Schumann, issued by the Limburg District Court in 1961. Schumann was released on the 29th of July 1972. The widow, Emmy Müller, took him in. Schumann had got away with the murder of tens of thousands of people. Now, I would point out that a blood pressure of 200 uh, by 130 is very high. I mean, last time I measured mine was 110 by 60. And certainly, um, I had a look at the National Health Service on the United Kingdom's chart, and uh, this was off the chart. So he must have had naturally high blood pressure. Uh, nonetheless, um, to actually have access to coffee and cigarettes and to be doing exercises, it, it's as though the doctors and medical staff wanted him to get off. After his release, a doctor paid regular visits to Schumann at Drysborn Strasse 5B in Frankfurt, Seebach, where he lived with Emmy Müller. The doctor gave sufficient notice before visiting to ensure that Schumann had the time to get his heart rate sufficiently high. Schumann died on 5th of May 1983, aged 77. So, he had many years of liberty after he was allegedly unfit to stand trial. In conclusion, I would like to use the words of Alexander Harvard Mitzelik, who was a doctor, psychoanalyst, university lecturer and writer. He lived through the Nazi dictatorship and was arrested by the Gestapo. His conclusion on some doctors in the Third Reich was, of the approximately 90,000 doctors working in Germany at the time, around 350 committed medical crimes. That's still an impressive number, especially when you consider the scale of the crimes. But it's only a fraction compared to the entire medical profession, about one three hundredth. But again, isn't that more worrying? One doctor in 300 is a criminal? That was a relationship that could never have been found in the German medical profession before. So why now? But that doesn't get to the heart of the matter. 350 were direct criminals, but there was some mechanism which enabled them or gave them the chance to f transform themselves into criminals. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you found that interesting. I upload every Friday at 20 hundred hours Central European time and sometimes at other times as well. My specialization is the Holocaust and I have many other videos of this nature.